even? You can't evening? Are you even evening right now? Dude, I am so evening. I can't right I can't even. On a scale of one to even, I can't. Yeah? Mm. Yeah. Well, that's very odd. You're very odd. No, you're very odd because you can't even. You're odd-ish. One oh. would say you're a Pokemon. Oh. I would Ditto. Though. I would never say that. Ditto. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> Did too. I think I remember the pun we we made last time. It was, I think it was like Hans down. Was no, that was th- that was the one you thought we made last time. It was, oh, it, was it was it was way better than oh, that. Oh man, are we gonna have to? We'll, yeah, we'll we'll figure out what it was once we do redo it. <laughs> Spillage. <laughs> I was about to like just do that and be like, that's one of the greatest sounds in the world. Uh, but before I could say anything, it just splashed all over my electronic equipment. Uh. We're good though. If you're still hearing this, then then we and the equipment survived. Not your father's root beer, Luke. I'm not your father's root beer. Brilliant marketing. Why didn't they, why they didn't do it? I have no earthly idea. It's right there. It's pretty good though. Um, so that's what we're drinking right now. What are we doing here? Well, this is the Star Wars Force Awakens spoiler cast. Mm-hmm. If you have not seen that movie, which you should, go see it. You tell him, Jeff. Now. Or if you even care about spoilers, and you haven't seen the movie, just. You're warning right now. Turn it off. Turn this mm-hmm. off right now. We're not kidding. Super spoiler, spoilerific, spoiler town population you in this podcast, all right? Indeed. We are going to spoil you. It's just, you know, Star Wars. this is this is an important movie to a lot of people. It's definitely important to cinema. It's one of the big it's probably the biggest movie release since the original Star Wars. Um so yeah, we're going to talk all about it. Um if you want a spoiler-free reaction review, um it's going to be a, mu- a much shorter um one, but I mean, it, you'll at least get a little taste if you haven't seen the movie. And you don't want spoilers. You can go watch that. That's up right now yeah. as well. But now, okay, you know the song. Fucking Star Wars: The Force Awakens is a real thing, and it happened. And I've seen it twice. I've seen it three times. I'm seeing it again tomorrow. It is all in all. I could put one word on it. Excellent, excellent film, excellent film. It's what I wanted out of Star Wars. Um, I've heard very, very little teeny tiny murmurs of some people, you know, are iffy about it or didn't like it, um, from other people saying that they heard people saying it. I haven't heard anybody say that. It's all hearsay. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's people out there. I mean, it's Star Wars. People actually kind of like to say, you know, ha- like have problems with things they love. They always want to find a problem with the thing they love. Yeah. I could sit here and be like, oh yeah, this, this and that, but I'd have to dig and I'd have to really like reach in deep and be like, do I really even care about that? Am I going to complain about that? No. I love this movie. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Just a fucking awesome ride from start to finish. The movie started and kept going. I immediately want to see it. So wanted to see it again. I saw it once with, with Jeff. And then the, the next day I bought, I was in, I was at work. I fandangoed on my phone. That's a funny sentence. Fandango. I fandangoed on my phone, bought another ticket for when I got off work to see it again. I loved it the second I time just as much. Thing. Huh? I did the same thing. Yeah, that was funny. Actually, I called Jeff when I got out of work because I was excited. Yeah. Uh, he's like, oh, I'm at work right now. I'm like, yeah, dude, I just got out. I just wanted to tell you that I'm going to go see Star Wars again. He was like, tonight? I'm like, yeah. He goes, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I actually went to a different theater, though, than the one we usually go to. Oh. I went to uh, Ridge. Oh, Ridge Cinemas. I haven't been there forever. Where's dude, that at again? It's on Pine Island and 84. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. And so dude, this one's off of a highway. The one I go actually the one I we go the uh, other movie theater we go to is off, off of a highway. Yes. A different highway though. However, this theater the seats are recliners. Yeah, that's what I remember about that it theater. Is, it is just phenomenal. Is that the theater where they serve you food too? Um There are theaters I, like similar There are that's theaters like it. that. I know that there is a Cinemark or Movie Co whatever you want to say that in in like Palm Beach that does do that. They do the dinner movie service thing. Yes. That's awesome. Um this one actually has a, a little pizza place in there too. Like uh, I think it's called My Pie, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's kind of awesome. And and you know, and I had like a, uh, I actually had a, a beer, too. Oh, that's they serve they serve beer there. Yeah, beer oh, and cider. Actually, no, it wasn't a beer. It was a cider, but still, it was a hard cider. It was good. I'm was glad good. that I'm glad that you actually know the difference and pointed that out. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. 
But um, but <laughs> anyway. appreciate your honesty. But anyway, yeah. Okay, so um, I'm actually going to a different theater tomorrow too than I I went the yeah. first two times. Although Cinemark is kind of our mainstay theater. Like, yeah. So I know we're just kind of talking yeah. random shit right now, but the we're Cinemark the theater that we're talking about is is it's probably you know the largest most popular movie theater in our somewhat area. Yeah, locally. Uh, it's Definitely. not like a big IMAX theater or anything like that, but they do show um, um, extreme digital. Yeah, the uh, XD. Thing. Yeah, the XD thing yeah. they show their you know IMAX, 3D movies and stuff like that. Yeah, it's just it's just you know they have good sound system. It's clean. It's it's just a good theater. It's not like a little shitty wonky theater. Like it's a good theater, and you pay for that. Really good. Um, so, I mean, I kind of just gave you a baby first impression on on the movie, kind of overall. Like, what, how did Jeff feel about it? You tell me, Jeff. How'd you feel? Okay, speaking from the outside, because I I don't know if we have established this through the other reviews, but you know. I, unlike Alex, am not a proper quote unquote Star Wars fan. Like that's just not that that's not normally my thing. Lord of the Rings is my thing. But did you do enjoy you some Star Wars? I enjoyed me some Star Wars very, very much. And the Force Awakens. How can I put this? Absolutely enthralled me. I mean, from the first shot. After the opening crawl, first of all, I, I want to I want to talk about the first shot very briefly in detail because you know f- throughout the other Star Wars movies, yes, it is a shot of a planet, it is a shot of a space battle, it is a shot of something in space, but there's always some kind of noise. This first shot was literally just a shot of uh, of Jakku, and then you just see the shadow. Of the Star Destroyer. Mm -hmm. Just eclipse it. And right then and there, I was automatically hooked. Um, And one little, like, baby thing I noticed. First of all, I almost, I wanted to laugh almost when I first saw the shadow because it sort of looks like a, like a, like a cack and balls. (laughs) But then I thought, but then I thought also it sort of looks like um, Kylo Ren's lightsaber with the hilt. Oh, very true. It has, like, the pointy top and the two sticking out in the side. Yeah. Oh, and it, but um, I was joking about the cack and balls thing. But I really wanted to say it looked like someone was flipping you the bird. Yeah, it, it was. It was. Uh, I thought it was very those ominous. kind of three things went through my head <laughs> when I saw funny. it, that and I actually smirked a little bit. I was like, did they? <laughs> did they really just do that? That didn't go through my head at all. But that's funny that you pointed that yeah. out. <laughs> it might just be my sick mind. It, it probably wasn't on purpose or anything. Well, it, Maybe it, it was, was meant f- to represent look like the hilt on the lightsaber. Maybe possibly. If, I, if anything, I, now I'm gonna have there. There and and there's still so much that I miss in this movie because I am just. Going through the story. Well, yeah, because you, them. I've seen it twice. You've seen it three times, and you said that even the third time, there's things that you saw yeah. that you didn't notice. Like today, first like, like I, I, like when I saw it today, um, you know, I, I listened to other reviews. I watched other reviews on YouTube. Me too. And, I, I watched like three other spoiler casts. Oh, <laughs> there's yeah. other ones out there. So if you're listening oh, to yeah. ours, thanks, thanks a lot. Absolutely, um, especially Jeremy Johnson, Chris Stuckman. Those two guys are my favorite movie reviews on YouTube. But um, when when Finn gives <laughs> BB-8 the thumbs up and BB-8 returns it with the butane lighter. I, I didn't notice that before, and that cracked me up. But Both times I viewed that movie, that got a huge freaking laugh. BB-8, that whole scene, that whole scene. BB-8, uh, I think we should first of all say, BB-8 is a very welcome addition to the Star Wars universe. Yeah, he definitely did. Definitely. He did, he did right by the droids of Star Wars, yes. you know, like he did, he provided humor, yes. his personality just shown through the, you know, just the robotics and, and and whoever was remote controlling him like did a great job of Fantastic just capturing work. just like the Fantastic humor work. and like like almost like the uh you know, like like the, the I don't I don't I don't know what you call it. It was almost like a like an innocence to BB-8. There was a there was an innocence like a, to BB-8, like a very yes. childlike and, and and loyalty. Actually, I mean, I also noticed um, a few. I hate this. I hate to put it this way because, but it's not in a bad way. But almost like a dog like quality to BB-8 because when he sees R two D two, when he uncovers R two D two, spoiler, yeah, kind of like bumps him. <laughs> yeah, he like mm, like yeah, like a dog would like nudges him, tries to see what's up with this dude. That was really um, funny. I love I love that. Um BB BB eight. Very, very, very well done. Well also like when he first um, when he first sees uh Poe Dameron again, his his original oh, master yeah. after they thought he had died. Oh yeah. Um he he, he, he first of all bolts he, toward he him. bolts towards him like so fast that he runs into Finn and Finn's like, Whoa, like he almost trips on him and goes straight up to him, just like a dog would like his a owner. Puppy. Yeah, just yeah, like, like a, a little, like an excited I, I, kid. Basically, Plainly enough, BB-8 is the direct antithesis of, of Jar Jar Binks. 
and that is a very good thing. Um, but for my initial impression, Misa BB-8. I, oh sorry, God, so sorry. No. Don't ruin it for me, man. Um, but no, my uh, my general impression was that this film was so freshly familiar. Mm-hmm. And well, a lot of people are, are are saying that the the story arcs are cl- very closely related to a new hope. Very close. And I can the see thing the, is, I can see the relationship. They're, they're they're right. Whoever says that, like, it's absolutely true. But when I'm watching the movie, I'm not even thinking that. Like, I can s- go away and be like, "Well, the story gonna goes like this," and just point out all the similarities. But it's not the same movie. J.J. Abrams did. I did read a couple of interviews with J.J. Abrams though, and he said, you know, that one of the the themes of Force Awakens is history repeats itself, and so it makes sense to me that well, it certainly some did. of the yeah, of course, and some of the events would, you know, have similarities to events that happened before. Um, but just the thing is, is that it it firmly reestablished what. The Star Wars cinematic universe is. It's a proper Star Wars film. It is a proper it, like, Star Wars. Film. I mean, prequels get a lot of, lot of, lot, lot of hate. They do, you know. And the thing is, I can find things I enjoy about the prequels, and I, I keep saying that Darth up Maul. until I've seen Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens. Yeah, Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens shits on the prequels, <laughs> and, and I'm not saying like di- agreed. Di- not saying directly, you know, like 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 you know hand-fistedly points at the prequels and goes, ha ha, we know they were bad. It's just such it was, a better, proper Star Wars yes. film. It was, it was with, Star Wars, man. Yeah. It was what I wanted, like, like, like I said earlier, and, and it, it was good, man. Like, it's a modernized Star Wars movie, but what I, really, what I really liked about it is how much it looked like the original trilogy, man. Like, it was that nice, that that lived-in, detailed, textured, yes. grim Star Wars universe yes. that, that has been lived in, and it's real. It's, it's not like this clean, pristine, futuristic sci-fi bullshit, man. Yep. CG w- everywhere. No, man, it was, it was, it was, it was palpable, man. I yeah, fucking you loved feel, it. You could reach out and touch it. it God, was made, looking at that movie, man. It was made with such love. Yeah. That... It was very you carefully help made. But love it. You could not help but love it because the film was made with such love for the property, for the characters, for the universe, for the fans. And, you know, I'm so happy. Oh, I'm so man. happy it was good. It was, it was more up, than good. I teared up a lot of, uh, so many times in that movie because I was astounded. You know, and like I said, I, you know, absolutely astounded. Like I said I wanted to see it immediately right after. Like well, Jeff and I first we left the theater and our, we our our minds were just raped. Like we were, we were just like, like, and Jeff even said, and this was cool that he said that, especially after a star Wars movie, he's like, you know, I haven't left a movie theater feeling like that in a long time. Like mm-hmm. we were mentally drained, but in like the most awe struck way. We yes. like, I saw it the second time and I'm just like, Oh, I'm going to watch it this time a little objectively. Yeah. I was excited again, you know, to see it again. Cause it was so great. And I loved it. I wanted more of it. I still want more of it. Um, so I'm sitting down to watch it the second time. Long, long time ago, galaxy far, far away. Star Wars starts the the song starts. I'm smiling ear to ear yep. again, again, Same and thing. and then I noticed a bunch of times during the movie my mouth hanging open, and this is in my second viewing, and I'm still just like, fuck yes, yep, you know. Uh, let's talk like, about the new characters. Yes, I want to talk about the new characters. You want to start? Um, we want to start Finn or Ray. We want to do. We already talked about BB, so we we, we got did that. talk about BB eight. Um, let's talk about Finn. Let's talk about Finn. All right, Finn. Finn is cool. FN FN two one seven eight two one eight seven two one eight seven, which is a reference to the film that gave George Lucas the idea for the Force. It was called twenty one dash eighty seven. I don't remember who directed it or whatnot, but that's where that and and Leah Cellblock on the Death Star. THX eleven eighty eight. Cellblock eleven eighty eight. Her cell number was two one eight seven. Oh, was it in the New Hope? Then what's the eleven eighty eight reference? That's in one of the eleven thirty. I think that's for George Lucas's first film. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's a reference in one of the Star Wars films to the THX 11. 11. Yeah, I think that's New Hope as well. It's a New Hope. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so um, I thought that was in the scene you were talking uh, what, about. And the thing is, is like, the Finn was given his name in the beginning of the movie. Yeah, when he meets Poe. When he meets Poe. Which, first of all, I, I love I love their their story because like they don't see each other for a long time, but in the short time that they were together, they they were like a super buddy team. 
and they had to be because they were helping each other and i love when future like you know later on in the movie like after they think poe's dead and then poe shows up again it wasn't yeah bba was super excited and just cut right in front of finn but when finn and poe saw each other man they ran up and hugged each other like they were bros yeah. from college because it was like it's very easy to probably make that relationship cheesy, but it didn't feel that way at all. It felt, it felt very natural. It felt super honest. Like, like you're alive, dude. Remember that shit that happened? Oh, man, thank God. You're awesome. My favorite moment between Finn and Poe is actually their first scene together where Finn you know, says to Poe, I'm breaking you out. This is a rescue. Mm-hmm. And Poe's like, why are you doing this? And Finn says, because it's-, it's the right thing to do. And then, And then there's a little beat, and Finn says, you need a pilot. And Finn's like, I need, <laughs> I need, I need a, a pilot. pilot. I need a pilot. I mean, I, I, I still great. think, I mean, the whole point of Finn leaving the New Order, though, is because he did feel like it was the wrong thing to be there. He had a crisis so, of conscience. So the right thing to do would be to, you know, yeah, you need a pilot, but also you're using the pilot who is, you know, who needs to rightly be freed. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, he's Everybody a resistance. Wins. Finn isn't resistance, but he is resisting the New Order. You know, yeah. so I think that's pretty cool. Like, he is, like, he's not resistance, but he is. Yeah. I, you know, I kind of put that together just he now. He becomes like, resistance. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, he he's not like sitting there going like, yeah, screw the new order. I want to fight them. He's like, I want to get away from them. Yeah. I want to run from them. I've seen the shit they can do. And he in, in, in that one yeah. scene in the cantina, he's like, we need to all be running. We need oh, to yeah. all and get even as Maz far Kanata, away as possible. Even Maz Kanata says, you know, to Finn when she adjusts her, her glasses, she says, you know, you have the eyes of somebody who wants to run. Yeah, uh, and and I like how he doesn't tell her no. He was just like, listen, you don't know anything about me. You don't know what I know about the New Order. You don't the things I've seen them do. He's just like, we should all run. <laughs> you yeah, know, like for real. that was pretty cool. I like the way that scene was handled yeah. actually, and I like that character Maz. Man, Maz was cool. Maz was pretty cool. I hope that she didn't die when that planet got blown up. I don't up think she did because I want to see more of yeah, her. Yeah, of course. Well, we got to know how she got the lightsaber. We True. Got to know how she got the I mean, lightsaber. that's possible that that you know she could have got like the story for getting the lightsaber can be told from another angle um it's possible that she did everything she needed to do in that in the star wars universe just because ray does end up with the lightsaber in the end and and she does and she does and she does eventually see luke you know so and that's all maz is pushing her to do yeah um like who knows maybe she's dead maybe she's dead and all we know is that you know the lightsaber fell when luke's hand got chopped off in empire it fell and it probably fell through the skies of Bespin, and maybe Maz had another watering hole on Bespin at that time, and it just happened to land like in the water or something or like that, and then she just retrieved it, and she just kind of knew. And um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't catch the name of the planet that the the uh, that cantina Ilenium was in. or something like that system. Okay, Ilenium, yeah, the Ilenium system. The Ilenium system, yeah. Yeah, we, there's the planet is never named, but the system is. Yeah, yeah. So. I'm, I'm just curious to see how she yeah. got that lightsaber. I'm curious I love, about that. Oh my god! But um, Anakin's getting back, lightsaber, by the way. I mean, if you're listening, you know what we're talking about because you've yeah. seen the movie. But uh, getting if you back, haven't and you're just listening to spoilers, just because it's just Anakin's getting, lightsaber that's in her possession. Yes. Um, Harrison Ford, Finn, and Ray. I love how I say Harrison Ford instead of Han Solo. Um, they're oh. in the cantina, uh, Maz's cantina, on, in the Ilenian system, I guess. And she goes downstairs, opens a chest. She hears calling to her, and it's Anakin's lightsaber. Yeah. She touches it, has a bunch of flashbacks. Still don't know too much about her background, but there's a lot of hints. And let me just say this. I really, 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 really think... That Ray is Luke's daughter. I believe that too. Now, that does beg the question: Who is Ray's mother? Exactly, and I'm and I don't think we know. It's no. going to be a new character. I think that's if that, it's even a character. It that's might just, an emp- that's an Empire kind of reveal for the next film. What if it's Leia? <laughs> you just went full Game of Thrones. My brother said the same thing today. I, I like, can I tell you something? Heck? I kept thinking the whole time, just like, dude, what if it is a incestual child That's from Luke and up. Leia which is messed up um, I've honestly I don't think so because because nah. uh, of Han and Leia's relationship in this movie like yeah. there's all they talk about is Kylo Ren Kylo Ren Kylo Ren Ben yeah. Ben Ben their son you know let's so. talk about Kylo Ren yeah so we talked about Finn let's talk about Kylo Ren a little bit Kylo Ren is a worthy successor to Darth Vader I believe what I really like about, about Kylo Ren is how how like I mean, not to quote him, but like how torn he is. Like he is all kinds of messed up. Mm-hmm. What I like 
about you know like the kind of to counteract Darth Vader a little bit is how much he wants to be like Darth Vader. He he wants to be dark, but he's fighting the light. Unlike Darth Vader, who you he know feels to pull the light and then but like uh, Darth Vader I, didn't I, want to be dark and and avoid the light. Darth Vader is surrendered just, himself to the. Darkness. He's just like fuck yes. Yeah, I I like I'm just it. so evil. I just he had to be pulled into the light. Kylo Ren is just. He's you know, confused little boy. Oh yeah. I was actually um thinking about it and I was wondering why you know he was never told by Luke or Han or Leia that Vader rejected the darkness, reclaimed the light and died Anakin Skywalker. I was wondering why or whether it was wiped from his mind by Snoke or yeah. something like that. And you know, I mean, we don't actually don't have that whole little chunk of history yeah. when, when Luke left to, to the Jedi that. Temple and it started training new Jedi and then I mean all we really hear is that Kylo Ren freaked out, killed everybody that yeah. was there and then dipped out. Yeah. And I think Ray was there too, just saying. She no, doesn't I know don't she think Ray was there. She doesn't know it. But I think she was there. Mm-hmm. How but you gotta think about this. How could she have started using force powers and even know what to do or say when she starts using them? And even Kylo mentioned it's just like she's only beginning to test her her power. She she's right. much more powerful than this. So I think she was involved somehow. Because remember in her flashbacks how she was dropped off in Jakku, right? And something left. So I think that she was somewhere else and has some sort of knowledge with lightsabers and force training. She just okay. does not remember. I can, I can see that. I she, just, she fights with a lightsaber but, too. Yeah, that was my... that. Well, I'll, I'll get to that. But that was my argument against her being a part of the New Jedi Order is because she was left on Jakku when she was a child. So True. how could she have trained with, you know, with Luke and all of them? I mean, I, it was very minimal training, pop, if there was any. Um, Probably, but also yeah. if she's Luke's daughter, I mean, it's already instilled in her. Of course, well. of course. Um, I loved one of my favorite moments with Kylo Ren, there actually. There is another Skywalker girl. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. <laughs> one of my favorite moments with Kylo Ren was actually the scene with Han. And ba- when, when he's setting the charges and then Kylo walks onto the, the, the catwalk and whatnot. And then Han follows him. With the conveniently and- placed just cavern underneath <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but which by the way probably shades of empire uh um, oh of course but that's the whole but point. um i'm sorry wow first of all the not your father's root beer is is making the gases build it's up, bubbly so it's bubbly it's bubbly carbonated and uh but w- the first thing that han says to kylo in the movie is ben mm-hmm. he shouts it and then w- and in and when i saw it with alex when Han said that, I I literally went like this. His well, you could Ben. Yeah, no, because you kind of you kind of turn to me and you go, dude, and I'm and I'm just like, yeah, I know, I heard it. No, that was awesome. I was just like, yeah, I was just like, but we didn't <gasps> we didn't say that to each other, but like you nudged me and I was yeah. like, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. But I I was just also like, his name is Ben, like his name is Ben. What I, like just, if if uh, I mean if there if there's an homage at all in the movie, there there are plenty, but that one is very. Highly ranked, at least to me. Yes, that, that was that was awesome. I I, 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 definitely prefer it over Jason. Now, Don't get it. now we're talking about <laughs> Kylo Ren. Yes. You know when 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 Ray kind of, you know, forces back, it yes. force like 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 re like like just rejects um, Kylo trying to read her mind and yes. reads his mind. That was a great and scene. calls him out saying like you're afraid that you're not going to be as powerful as Darth Vader. Yeah. Like this guy wants to be evil, but he's there's so much light in him. And now going back to this the scene with Han, his father, um, you know he takes his mask off and he and he and he starts to weep and he's like, dude, like. I'm so torn. I want to be free of this pain. Yeah. I, I, the, I, I, I hear the light calling me. I know what I have to do, but I do not, I do not know if I have the strength to do it. Now he's talking about the point of no return. He's yeah. talking about murdering Han Solo. It says, and will you help me? Will you help me? And he, and he, and he kills Han Solo. Yes, Han Solo dies. I knew that was going to happen. I think the way that it happened was beautiful, and it couldn't have happened any better. Like, that's the point of no return. Like. Yeah. Once he did it, he's like, "All right, I'm here now. Yeah. I'm the evil guy. I what light? I just murdered that, my father. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like that he had to, do, he had to do movie. all of that. Like, oh, it's it's it, so it, sad. They, I just, I, I literally, Han Solo is dead. 
long live Han Solo. I think we can say that. But you know what? I'm glad that, you know, he didn't die in Empire or Jedi. Just because of the fact that he was such a huge part of The Force Awakens and such a great part of The Force Awakens. Yes. He was center screen for most of the movie. Yeah. but As much as Rey and Finn were, 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 you know, upfront roles, Han stole the fucking Han, show, man. Yeah. Han was the bridge between, not the bridge of the ship, but the bridge between the old and the new. Mm-hmm. And I love that. I loved that, that you know... He and I love the the camaraderie he developed with Finn and Ray, and the fact that he was back with you. It was it, this was probably I agree with you the most perfect send off we could have ever gotten for Han Solo. Yeah, that, that, and, that's, that's, that's just <coughs> freaking yes. The writers of Force Awakens, J.J. Abrams, really. like beautifully done. And even the last shot where as he's falling, he's still grazes the face of his son yeah like you're still my son like that is just that was that was that was one of the best death scenes i've seen in absolutely like not just because of the people you know the characters of course that we love and how much it it fucking hit you when that happened like even if you knew it was gonna happen it was just like the timing was so well done the acting was so good and it was just like it was the perfect moment you know, it's such a sad moment, but it was the perfect <laughs> sad moment. It, like I, uh, my, I mean, Jeff looked and you know turned and looked at me. I remember after, right after that happened, and I'm sure he saw the expression on my face. Like I was, I was cut. Yeah. <laughs> I was de- like I was cut too. I was just like, and I'm not even the proper fan, as I've said. I'm still so, upset that he's dead. Uh, but I'm also glad at the same time. Like it's it's a weird thing. Like at the, yeah. it was it was right for the story. It Definitely. like I said, it was done just right. But Han Solo's dead, man. Yeah. One thing I noticed, though, is pretty cool. Remember when Han kind of offers Rey a job on the Falcon? Mm-hmm. He kind of takes a liking to her, and he's like, I like this girl, I like this girl. Yeah. He even says uh, to Finn at some point, he's like, I like this guy. How after Han dies, and, and, and Finn and Rey and Chewbacca uh, go back in the Millennium Falcon to take off, at, you know, after you know the whole fight with Kylo Ren and everything... Ray is in Han's seat and Chewbacca's co-piloting. Yeah. So she is now the captain she's of the Millennium Falcon. She's inherited the Millennium Falcon. She's inherited the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. I the Millennium love that. fucking Falcon. Uh, that's 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 really cool. Let's talk about Ray. I I I love her. Yeah. Definitely one of my new crushes. Definitely. She's super cute. She's super cute. And you know what? They didn't sex her up and I love that. No. I love that. No. I love that. Uh, it's it like she it's she is such a refreshing, strong, forceful, expressive, soulful. She is a... And cheery. And very cheery. And that's not just because she's British. Dude, let me tell you something, dude. Oh, man. Daisy Ridley. Props to Daisy Ridley. When she the, is worthy. The one she scene that worthy. The one scene that really, really, really got me to be like, okay, she's just so likable, you know, is when they're in oh, the man. Millennium Falcon and she rips the compressor... <laughs> That was compressing the hyperdrive on the Millennium Falcon off. And, and Han's like, what'd you do? And she just has this the dumbest smile across her face. And she's like, I bypassed the compressor. I love it. And she's just smiling. And I'm just like, how how can you how can how could anyone not like her if they don't? Like she's just too too like so what a good. wonderful what a wonderful so warm. warm, soulful, badass. She is a she is a by badass. the end of like I mean she she was like badass like for most of the movie but like especially at the end man like that right. moment when Anakin Skywalker is just in the snow and you see Kylo trying to force you know pull it towards him and Did all of a sudden just it just the lightsaber Anakin Skywalker Anakin's lightsaber sorry yeah you said I Anakin meant, Skywalker I meant to say Anakin snow. Skywalker's lightsaber yeah when Anakin Skywalker's in the snow and. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and, and it just it just whips right past Kylo's yeah. face into her hands. That was like a, oh shit, fuck yeah moment. Like, yeah, like definitely. it is on like, right now. That whole lightsaber fight at the end was definitely a callback to New Hope and oh no, not not New Hope. I'm sorry, Empire and Jedi. Yeah, it was a like, little blend very, of Empire and Jedi. Very very uh. uh Non choreographed, very raw, very visceral. However, however, when the bait and switch is finally achieved, and we see Ray with the. By the way, side note: 
her Jakku rags actually resemble Jedi clothes, mm -hmm. which should have been a dead giveaway. It, hindsight's twenty twenty. But then going back, you know that entire fight. I when I when I saw it again, I, you notice she's running away from Kylo Ren. She's trying to get the fuck away from this psychopath, mm -hmm. and then he's got her cornered. And he says, you know, you need a teacher. I can show you the ways of the Force. And she quiets her mind. The Force. She quiets her mind. And then, but after she allows the Force to flow through her, then you start to see some choreography and some finesse from her in her in her lightsaber fighting. She does a little twirl with the lightsaber. It's so cool how she is a natural adept, how Rey is a natural adept. Which is why with, I with think that she... In the past, had some sort. Of I think I can see your point now. Training yeah. because she had, like he said, the force, and she's like the force. Yeah, the force, and then she's reminded of what she can do. Now, this is only the beginning for her. Yeah, I see a total Luke Skywalker thing where she just gets more and more badass and oh, more yeah. and more calm and focused on you know the force and, and being able to use it. And yeah, I mean, of course, she's gonna become a Jedi. Luke's gonna be in the next movie. He has to be. Oh my god! Oh my course, god! Oh my god! Course. Episode eight. I can't wait. Oh, by the way, that moment between Finn and Han when they're on Star Killer base and they're trying to find Ray whatnot what yada yada and Finn says we'll find her we'll use the force and Han goes that's not how the force works oh no he wasn't talking about finding Ray though he was talking about being able to turn off the was shield it? oh okay it was because, still, those, that exchange well that that whole little baby scene right there was funny he's just oh. like he's just like oh so what was your position here he's like I was in sanitation, sanitation. he's like you were in sanitation he's like do you even know how to disable the shield he's like not really but we'll, 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 we'll find a way we'll, oh, we'll, yeah, that's we'll right. use the force that's, that's not, not how, how the fu force works and the two he's like no. he's like oh really you're cold <laughs> And then the scene just changes, and that was just so funny. But but then when they corner Phasma, which by the way, Phasma was a cool character. She didn't do much in the movie. Yeah. But I, a I, lot of I, people I, are disappointed about her character. Well, I anticipate her having more of a role as the films yeah. progress. I think so too because they talk about putting her in the trash compactor. That's what I want to get at. Which is a super throwback to to, oh, a, to a New Hope. But um, you don't actually see her die. Yeah. So I definitely think she's gonna be. Around. I just like that exchange after they have her disabled the shields and um. And then Han is like, is there a garbage chute? A trash compactor? And Finn's like, yeah, there is. Yeah, I, 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 love, I love his smile. He's like, yeah, there is. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, going back to Finn, like, also when they get... When Hilarious, they, when they by court, the way. Yeah, Finn was really funny. The He's humor like, in this movie is... I liked it. Like, it wasn't yeah. too much, but it was so... Like, the movie was... It was actually pretty dark for being, like, a first in a trilogy, especially for Star Wars. Yeah. Um, but a lot of lightheartedness too, which Definitely. I which I liked, and it didn't ruin either feeling it gave me. The yeah. movie was just enjoyable from start. And to like finish. you know, when when Finn's when when Ray asks Finn, "Are you with the resistance?" Finn's like, "Yes, I'm with the resistance. Yes, yeah, I am with the resistance. Yeah, <laughs> with the resistance. I've never met a resistance fighter before. This is what, this we, is look what we look like. like. Most of us. Some of us look different. <laughs> just great. So just great. Good. Like Finn has great banter with BB-8." Um, you know, with, uh, by the way, we should talk about Poe a little bit more because Poe had a very small role yeah. in this movie, but holy crap, po is, is he kid. not one of my favorite characters of the movie? Poe is the most interesting man in the galaxy. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Poe like, doesn't always fly an X-Wing, but when he does, he's kicking ass. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. And his first scene with Kylo Ren, you know. Bring up, they they drag him up to him. So who, who's like, gonna talk first? I talk first. You talk first. Talk first? <laughs> Sorry, it's kind of hard to understand you with the whole mask thing. <laughs> with, the, with the the apparatus. <laughs> Is that what he says? The he apparatus. Says apparatus. Nice. The whole apparatus. Nice. Like like Poe is great. Like there is not an unenjoyable character in. Yeah, this I film. mean, like I said, he's one of my favorites. I mean, they're all they're all my favorites. Like, but I definitely. No, he's gonna. There's gonna be more Poe, mm -hmm. and I can't wait for more Poe. We're gonna have Mo Poe. I cannot wait for Mo Poe. Oh yeah. Um, what were your thoughts on Star Killer Base as um, a successor to well, the Death Star? Well, once again, a... once again, huge, huge, huge plot point that was Super New Hope. It, this this movie was like Super Steroid New Hope, and. Not I'm, not I'm, not, I'm not complaining about that. Yeah, I love this movie. I'm going to see it again tomorrow. Like I said, I'm going to see this movie a lot. And so I'm going to see this movie until I don't like this movie. And I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Probably not going to happen. So you. Star Killer Base, which is like the bigger, badder, badder uh, Death Star, which is you know it, it's mentioned 
um, when uh, uh, General Leia Organa, their you know, or Princess Leia to other people who don't want to call her by that name. Yeah, to me, she's royalty. Well, the thing is, like you know, Leia Organa, like that's her name. Her name is Leia Organa, and she is the general in the Resistance. So it's not Princess Leia anymore. No, she is a princess, but it's General Leia Organa. Be respectful. She's a goddamn general. Yes, ma'am. Um, <laughs> um, so you know, she's just like. Well, what's the big difference with this one? She's like, well, look at the size difference, you know, like when they pop it up in the screen. Oh, yeah, no, and, no. and Han's just like, so what? It's bigger. Yeah, <laughs> like, so it's bigger. <laughs> yeah, um, it, and it's much, much bigger. It's planet size instead of moon it size. It is a planet. Hold on one moment. <laughs> well, like, I'm sorry to cut you off, but they disguised it very well in the posters because in the posters you just see like a, what looks like a redesigned Death Star. Yeah, and then which is what it is, but yeah, yeah. It's the size is is... is like tremendous compared to the Death Star, Indeed. at least the way they compared it in the in the hologram visual, which on was screen. great, by the way. Yeah, another nice um, little update. Yeah, exactly. Holograms. Yeah. Um. So I thought Starkiller Base was pretty cool. Um. I like how it was very hot like it was a very snowy planet. I like that. Um. I love, love General Hux. Yes, General Hux. Was, His was speech really, really... before they set off the super weapon on that planet. Man, he fucking. He, he's, he's great. He, like you he's believed great. him. He, he, you he, believed him. He's man. very. If what I love about General Hux is that he's a very effete, very proper sort of like old school style. Like you, you if you, like basically he mimicked some villain out of World War II in yeah. that speech. Mm-hmm. So you know they will bow. Well, the new to order. The first order. Yeah, the first order is. Very World War Two. Very, very Germany. Very Nazi. World War. Very Nazi-ish. Um, I mean, just. But appropriately so, I think. I mean, dude, like, you know, going back to Star Killer Base as as an actual super weapon, like, it will, you know, yeah, Death Star can destroy a planet. Star Killer Base can destroy multiple planets yeah. at the same time using the sun's power. I thought it was pretty cool that it actually drew power from the sun yeah. of that system. Yeah. To charge the weapon and just throw it back out there. Yeah. I was actually confused on that point because I had read about Star Killer Base before, and I thought when I when it read that it could destroy entire star, star systems, I thought that the weapon f- shot at the sun of a star system and the resulting blast destroyed the planet. No, it's literally freaking. It's home. the opposite. It's, it's really it's, cool. It's homing solar flares, essentially mm-hmm. solar rockets, I should say. Yeah. Solar beams. Projectual, projectiles. But like just, just aimed like crazy. Bullseye. Yeah. It hits what it mean what it means to hit and it hits multiple things yeah. and and it wipes that. Oh out. yeah. Did it destroy the Republic like the Central Republic system, the Hobbit? Yeah, man, system? dude, that like was the, the all, like like all you know, like the council and everything. Like if That's you know I figured okay. If you notice when yeah. it's when it's going to like that city like planet, um one of the ladies in that scene, I believe was a part of of um, you, you see her basically like in some sort of council meeting at mm-hmm. some point in the series. Oh, okay, I could be thinking of the Matrix. Forgive well, me. It wasn't Mon Mothma, was it? No, 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 no. no. You know what? I think I'm thinking of the Matrix. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. I just watched the Matrix recently too. Uh, Good gotcha. stuff. Franchise. That mixed up. that is an. Other, well, the thing is, I recognized her face, and I was oh, kind okay. of thinking, so oh, maybe was... that was another little callback to something, but. Matrix for another time. Yes, another podcast. Well, we will. We will. Um, um, still. So the what do you think about stuff. the ending, man? How'd you like the way the movie ended? I actually really liked the way the movie ended. Um, Did you almost think we weren't going to see Luke for for a little teeny for, tiny for second? For a little bit, yes. I was uh, like, there was that moment on Star Killer where, with the moment with with Anakin's lightsaber, where for a second I thought we would just see. Would just see Luke, like it. It would fly into Luke's hand, and Luke would have his would duel with Kylo Ren. I was so glad I would have Rey. hated that. I, I, I'm just saying that thought did cross yeah, my yeah, mind. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But what I am so happy about is that, you know, when Star Killer Base is destroyed or whatever, and they go back and R two reactivates, they complete the map, and then Ray and Chewie and R two. Which I'm kind of disappointed about that, but I understand why BB-8 has to stay with Poe. But I wish BB-8 would have gone with Rey. Well, because because and... Chewbacca and R2 worked together before, and right, and right. That, they, but, you know, you, you don't need two BB-8's, droids like that. But BB-8 still cool. No, I'm thinking BB-8 instead of R2, and R2 could go with Poe. 
That doesn't make sense. Yeah, but regardless. Anyway, getting back on track. These are just my thoughts. Um, I love that there's no dialogue. It's all music. The cinematography, especially in that last scene, is beautiful. And, it's a really cool location. And I, I'm, I'm curious about Luke's expression. The expression on Luke's face. He's just like... Well, he's definitely been... Very, he's, he's, he, it was it was it was very like he came out of a huge huge like pensive thought like when he was when she when she walks up to him and, and he's looking out into the ocean and it looks like he's meditating and 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 he turns around it just looks like he's been standing there staring with his eyes open for for years like like just in deep 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 thought and like not even just meditation but almost in in in, in grief you know oh what I'm yeah, he does. I think he does feel responsible for. for of course, Kylo which Ren is which is that. which is yeah. which is mentioned, yep. um, at, at some point, and he turns around and he sees her, and he sees his father's lightsaber, like, in her hand. The emotion like, in his face. Wow, it, it was absolutely brilliant. And I kind of like, the, and it's not funny, but when you think about it in retrospect, it's kind of funny. Like, she like kind of looks at him like. Come on, dude. Yeah. And he kind of gives her that nod, like, I can't, but I should, and I know it. <laughs> like, like he was just like, are, are you, are you, are you, are you, is this, uh, like, it, yeah, it, no, there's so many conflicting emotions on his face. He's like, who are you? But then it's like, I've seen you before. It's like, what is that? Oh my God. Is that what I think it is? is so on, so forth. Do I, do you want me to do with it? What I think you want me to do with it? Like, like, it's, it's just like, oh God, is wow. it so like, you're right. So many emotions, yeah. Through the, then, those those brief moments, man. Oh, oh my god, yeah. And then the final shot of the film is a tracking shot Absolutely. of the of the same positions of the actors, just, and, just, and it's just perfect. Mm-hmm. It's like you know, her she, arm extended, lightsaber in hand. And so what's Luke, next? Luke looking at her, and then what is next? What is next? And of course, both times I've seen the movie, claps at the end of it. Yes, I, I'm 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 ten out of ten. Yeah, I'll say 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, dude. Definitely. I think the last time I went to a movie theater and was so enthralled by a movie, if it wasn't The Dark Knight, it was Return of the King. This is the thing, man. Even so much like A New Hope again. When the first Star Wars came out, it was like, what the heck? Oh my God, you got to go see this movie. You gotta see this. You gotta experience this movie. Some people said it was life changing for them. Yep. They went to see it multiple, 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 multiple times in theaters. This movie reminds me of that feeling. I have not felt that way about a movie in so long. I don't even go to the movie theater. As Jeff, I don't no, go to the doesn't. movie theater unless I re- unless it's a Wes Anderson movie or something that I'm like, okay, I have to see this movie, which almost never happens. Yep. Maybe once a year I go to the movies. Yep. Star Wars coming out. Obviously, I gotta go. He was talking. About I will. It the entire time. I will spend money. Over and over and over again to watch Star Wars. I'm going for a third time. I'm pretty sure there'll be a fourth time. There maybe will a be a fourth. Time. There's going to be more times, and it's so exciting. It just got me excited about something again. And I haven't felt that way in so long about pretty, just, a, about a lot of things. Like we've become so desensitized as a movie going culture. We become so used to, and ironically enough, we can partly blame Lucas for it. I'm sorry, but we can. You know. Too much CGI, not enough well-developed characters, um, and just shallow storytelling. This film should serve as a seminal moment in cinematic history where we go back to artistic filmmaking. And, And also fun, and having fun at the movies again. You know, it's all about making money nowadays, and yes, this movie is going to kill records but more importantly it is going to drive people to imagine further and to have fun at the movies again yeah (laughs) that's so dope like that is such a good feeling to have by the way a little bit of trivia that i wanted to give you at the beginning of the podcast um there's going to be a full moon on christmas Okay. Okay. The last time there was a full moon on Christmas was in 1977. What? I think it's a good omen. Yeah, man. Can't wait for episode eight. 
Star Wars Episode oh, Seven. Man. I, I am, I'm already it. speculating about Episode Eight. I'm already writing a character for Episode Eight. That's because that's how much this movie has has inspired me. Is it Captain it's, Plasma? Captain Plasma? No. <laughs> his his name is Captain Phaser. His name is Deck Malas. Oh, M A L A S. Is he a bad guy? You don't know until the end of the movie. Episode nine. <laughs> uh, oh, that's, wow! There's gonna be an episode nine. Yeah, there is, and there's gonna be Rogue One. What came up for Rogue One? Is I'm there still... gonna be a ten, eleven, and twelve? Do you think Star Wars is I just gonna think, go and go, or I, are they I, gonna eventually I stop it, it? I think. Uh, I think it could. Depending, it's very up in the air. But you know like, what I think? It's gonna be seven, eight, and nine. Definitely with those Star Wars universe movies around it, and then I think there's gonna be Star Wars again, and it's gonna be a completely new line of story. Unrelated to the Skywalker family. To the Skywalker family. I I do believe that could happen. Um, I'm just saying if it if there's gonna be more, I think that's what it's gonna be. Yeah, but but the main Star Wars saga has centered around the Skywalker family for so long that you know I I think first of all Daisy Ridley is now firmly entrenched in in fandom. Ray, I'll call her Ray Skywalker. Um. She is going to be Sky Ray Walker. Sky Ray Walker. Uh, uh, she is like this is this is going to be her defining role as Han Solo was for Harrison Ford, and she's young enough now. She definitely could do another trilogy once this is complete. She could be if she if she is, and I do believe she is the successor to Luke Skywalker. Then the next trilogy may use her as a jumping point, as opposed to the previous generation. Mm -hmm. But what makes it great is that this will be a generational film franchise, and that each and each new trilogy will be, a, will be a trilogy unto itself, while being able to look back on what happened before it. And that's a very rare thing for a franchise to be able to have so much history to fall back on and reference and like even then you even in this film Luke Skywalker I thought he was a myth like I mean the it, it, the possibilities are endless I am very interested to see where Rey's journey takes her I'm very interested to see if Kylo Ren can be redeemed, if Ben Solo can be redeemed. I like that name. Ben Solo. Ben yeah, Solo. I never said it. I never thought about it like that. I like the name Ben Solo. Um, I want to, you know, I want to follow these new characters. Ben Solo, Kylo Ren, Ren Kylo. Kylo Ben. No, wait, think about it. Kylo Ren, Ren Kylo, Ben Solo. Oh yeah, there's the same. There's a little bit of a similarity, yes, yeah. of course. I want to probably how they came up with the name. They're like, let's change a couple of consonants around. <laughs> I no, I want to know. Well, the thing is, is that Snoke. We never talked. We never touched on Snoke, but Snoke was a cool character. Yeah. I want to see. You know, more it's of him like too. yeah, because you know, there's not really much to say about nah. Snoke besides that we just don't know anything about him. Yeah, and so he is it, the new it'd emperor be, figure. It'd be interesting, you know, to see yeah. his reveal, but um, his true reveal. Yeah, but Snoke calls, and also, what the fuck happened? Yeah, yeah. There's so much. History how did in his face. how did Kylo get there? And what the fuck happened? Yeah, yeah where, where does Snoke come from? Like, yeah. but that's that's yeah. dude. I just can't wait for more Star Wars. Of man. course, I just wanted to finish this one thought where he calls Kylo Ren. Master of the Knights of Ren. Who are the Knights of Ren? You do see them. You do see... I, I in did, one I, flashback. I thought I saw them in a flashback. But yes. what's so cool is that that's the only time you see them. Yeah. So There's I so much more. To, yeah. There's so much more. And I can't be I can't be more excited. We could talk for hours about speculate. I, you know, and, and Jeff said... Had, Jeff made a couple points about just, you know, movie going in general that we touched on. And Star Wars in general and, and how it is generational. And, and I think he actually spoke very, very well on those two things, you know. So very eloquently said, Jeff. Thank you, Give yourself a hand on that. I, I, that I do good. try. Um, yeah. I can't wait for more Star Wars. Thank you guys for listening to this. Um, you Thank know, you very much. If, if, you know, we're just super excited about it. We're glad that we get to talk about it and get to share it with you. Um, if you yeah. enjoy this, go ahead and like it. Um, subscribe to us. We're, you know, we're going to be doing a lot of, a lot of stuff. Um, 
pretty soon, actually, in the next coming months, we're actually going to try to set up, you know, a consistent weekly yeah. podcast. Um, not always going to be movie um, reviews and, 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 you know, dissections and, and analysis. 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 Um, analysis. Nice. And there, there's a little hint for what the podcast could be. A little, <laughs> little steez cast coming for yes, you. Of course. So, um, yeah. And um, we also wanna, want to want you to share with us. That's another thing we yeah, cannot stress. Feedback enough. is super important. We can't stress that enough. This this is this is on YouTube and only on YouTube for now. There's a comment section. Comment, Jeez. ask questions, make suggestions. You know, please do that. And um, we actually, we want to yes. we want to definitely you know entertain you and actually give you something that you want to listen to. So if you if you got a question, you want to hear, we'll pick our brains about it a little bit. Go ahead, throw it down there. We'll 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 talk about it. Oh yeah, we'll definitely be in touch. Absolutely. All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening. We will see you on another time. May the force be with you. Star Wars, give me the Star Wars. Nothing but Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah.